All right, guys and gals, what we're doing is we're going to be solving some equations, just regular good old-fashioned algebra. But the kinds of equations that we're solving are exponential ones and logarithmic ones. So two very simple to understand objectives here. First one, being able to solve some exponential equations, and the second one, being able to solve logarithmic equations. So let me pretty much spell it out for you right here. If you want to solve an exponential equation, you're going to have to use a logarithm. And in order to solve a logarithmic equation, you're going to have to use an exponential. Because those things are inverses of each other and they undo each other. Okay, so here is then objective one. Objective one is about being able to solve exponential equations. You might be scratching your head at this little uh, image where you have all these different uh, types of mustaches. What? So let me simplify the very first property that we're going to look at. I'll call it the mustache property. And it's like this. If the bases are the same, then the mustaches have to be the same. What? Well, here, let me explain. Um, let's look at this first example. If 2 to the x is equal to 2 to the third power, what must x be equal to? Well, the only thing that makes sense here is x is equal to 3. So what I'm saying is, if the bases are the same, then the mustaches must be the same, going back to that picture there. Huh? Crazy. Okay, so this is the equality of exponentials, a property of them. So right there in the middle in red, if b is a positive number, a positive real number that's not equal to 1, just like the base of exponential can't be 1, doesn't make sense, then b to the x is equal to b to the y if and only if x is equal to y. All right, so from that other uh, example, what we just looked at, what that meant was x to the, or 2 to the x was the same thing as 2 to the third as long as x was equal to 3. So this gives us our first way to solve an exponential equation, and it really doesn't involve logarithms. It is, if you can make the bases the same, then the exponents or mustaches must be the same. So, let's look at that right here on exercise two. Solve three to the x equals one ninth to the x plus three power. I can use that property of the equality of exponentials if I can make the bases the same. Can I rewrite the number one ninth as a power of three? And the answer is I can, right? Because one ninth, first of all, if it is um, a fraction instead of a whole number, my exponent must have been negative. So let me write this as three to the negative something. And then in order to get a nine from a three, I'm squaring it. Would you agree that three to the negative two power is equal to nine? I hope you would agree. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put this, I'm gonna substitute it right in there rewrite this equation thusly. Two to, no, no I'm not, nope, 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 nope. Three to the x is equal to, take out the one ninth and put in three to the negative two power to the x plus three. Okay, and now uh, over on the right hand side you have a power raised to a power and you're supposed to multiply those things. So again, three to the x, just rewriting, is equal to three to the and now the new power is negative 2 multiplied times x plus 3. Now, if the bases are the same, the exponents must be the same. So this simplifies to just simply x is equal to negative 2. And I'm going to go ahead and distribute here as I go. Save myself some time. Negative 2x minus 6. Now let's solve that very simple linear equation. Add the two x's over, get three x equals negative six, so x equals negative two. X equals negative two. And it, it only takes a, a couple of seconds to check it. Let's see if it makes sense. Over here, if I were to stick in three to the negative two power, just like I have right up top there, it's equal to one ninth. Okay, let's look at the right hand side. One ninth to the negative two plus three power, that's to the first power, that's still equal to one ninth checks out. Okay, so first way to solve an exponential, sometimes, it only works sometimes, if you can get the bases to be the same number. But what about this one? 
9 to the x equals 25. Can you get 25 to be a power of 9? Heck no. So you can't rewrite as a power of 9. Not a power of 9. So what do you do in that case? The answer involves a logarithm. So for example, if you had an algebraic equation that had an x squared in it, you can solve it by doing the inverse of that, which is taking the square root. So if I have an exponential, in order to solve it, I can take the logarithm to get rid of it. And that's what we're doing here. So basically, if you cannot rewrite the bases to be the same thing, or maybe you just don't want to, you take the log of both sides. All right? So that's method number one. Just take the log of both sides. You usually take the log of the same exact base of the exponential that you have, but you don't have to. Okay, number two is you just take that exponential equation and you rewrite it in logarithmic form. And what we will see is that essentially these things are the same thing. Now, one other thing is that um, I, you might have to use a change of base formula. Just take a look. Okay, so here is the first method solving that previous problem. 9 to some power is equal to 25. Okay, so the, the first method is just take the log of both sides, and specifically the log base 9, because that's what base that you have. So on the left-hand side, you have log base 9 of 9 to the x is equal to the log base 9 of 25. Now, what happens to the quantity over there on the left-hand side? It cancels out. So it's inverse, right? So it just gives me x back, and then I have the log base 9 of 25. If I had a calculator that evaluated uh, base 9, then I'd pretty much be done. I could just put this in the calculator and I'd be done. But I don't. I only have base 10 or natural log base e. So then I'm going to have to use a change of base formula. So I could write that as the log of 25 over the log of 9. Remember, the original base always goes on the bottom. So here we are at approximately 1.465. So there's the first method. Just take the log of both sides. So on one side, the log and the exponential will cancel each other out because they're inverses. Here is a modified version of that first method. Instead of taking the log base 9 of both sides, just take whatever log that you want. Since you already have on your calculator base e or base 10, why don't you just take the log of one of those? Pick your favorite. So. Take the natural log or the common log of both sides. Pick your favorite, and I usually choose the natural log. Okay. So natural log of 9 to the x is equal to the natural log of 25. Over on the left-hand side, this does not cancel out this time. That's okay. And the reason why it doesn't cancel out is because the bases are not the same. This is, over here on the left, is implied to be a base of e, and that's a 9, so they don't cancel each other out. But what I can do is I can bring this x out to the front by the power property of logarithms. Bring that x out to the front. And now the natural log of 9 is just a number that's being multiplied by x. In order to get rid of it, you just divide it over to the other side. So x is equal to, finally, the natural log of 25 divided by the natural log of 9. And what you should notice here is it did the change of base for you in the course of solving the problem, that you didn't have to go back and go, oh, I need to reevaluate this log using the change of base formula. Since we already started with a log key that was on the calculator, I don't have to do a change of base formula. Okay, so then the second method was, well, why don't you just rewrite it in logarithmic form? So if I still have the same exact problem, 9 to the x is equal to 25 writing it in logarithmic form, the base of the log should be 9. So you write it as the log base 9 of whatever you take in, or whatever your answer is, so 25, should be equal to x. There we go. And there's your answer. Again, just like uh, I mentioned on the first method, if you had a calculator that computed log base 9s, you just put it right in. But since we don't, we just have to use a change of base formula on it, and we get the exact same answer as we got before. So you'll have to decide in the course of doing these problems that which one are you going to choose? 
which method is the most efficient for you, which one is it that you understand best. Okay, let's check out one more of these problems, uh, you know, together. So I'm going to solve this exponential equation. And notice there's an E in it, and that's very, very convenient. So step one is to isolate this exponential term. So I'm going to subtract the 16 over, so negative 3 e to the 2x is equal to negative 11. Divide by the negative 3, e to the 2x is equal to 11 thirds, the negatives cancel. And now, I'm just going to get rid of that x, or get rid of that exponent up there, by taking the log of both sides. Specifically, I would take the natural log because it's base e, and also because that's a key that's on the calculator. So take the natural log of both sides of this. On the left-hand side, the natural log and the e will cancel out because they're inverses, leaving me with 2x. On the right-hand side, nothing will cancel out, and I just have the natural log of 11 divided by 3. And then the final step is just to divide your answer by 2. So x is equal to... No, 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 man. The natural log of 11 divided by 3 all over 2. And if you were looking for an exact answer, that's what it would be. But we're often not. We're just looking for an approximation here. So we need to pull up the calculator and type it in. And let's get an approximation here. So start by hitting the natural log key, 11 divided by 3 within the parentheses. And then all of this divided by 2. And I get about 0.65. That's what I'll round it to. About 0.65. All right, now let me show you something special. It will only take you a few more seconds to, uh, you know, check this out. And that is, let's go back to the calculator here. And that's the exponent. If I if I just type this equation in again, it should be equal to 5 at the, end, at the end. So type this in, just like you see it, negative 3, e to the, so second natural log key gives you me the e to the, 2 times, and I'm going to hit second answer, so I don't have to call that back in again. Get out of the exponent there, get out of, there we go, and then plus 16, plus 16. And then enter, look at that, I've got 5, so I know that I checked out and I did my problem correctly. Okay, so the next video, we'll just have a collection of exercises for you to try.